Okay, back to On the Line. Our guest today on show number one is Ted Larson of the Moorhead State University Speech and Theater Department and, of course, the sub-department that he has developed himself, the uh, Film Department, which began way back in 1968. Uh, Ted has so many credits, but I've got to run down a few things. First of all, Ted's a native of Glendon, Minnesota, just down Highway 10 here a ways. And he went to Moorhead State University, taught at Ben Franklin Junior High, spent some time in, higher, uh, in pursuing a higher degree at uh, Middlebury College in Vermont, then got his uh, master's at Kansas University in film. In, uh, in radio, TV, film, and theater. Okay, radio, TV. And then, of course, returned to Moorhead State University on the faculty since 1968 in the speech and theater department and began with the uh, development of the uh, film department and classes that have become very popular. Also, throughout most of the years of uh, Straw Hat Theater has been managing director, who takes care of a lot of the, uh, the, the business side or the, the house managing and arranging for uh, publicity, for ushers and all of this. Uh, and also, another uh, that uh, many of you may be aware, uh, since 1974, with the uh, beginning of Silent Movie Night, which has always gone on two or three times or more a year, uh, Ted has been uh, an original co-producer throughout the years with Silent Movie Night at the Fargo Theater, which you tell me has raised over the years between three and $400,000. Uh, somewhere in that figure for a restoration of the theater and maintenance of the theater, and we're very proud of that. It's from the people in the, in the Valley, of course, that have said, we want to keep this theater here. Okay, you know, Ted, you know? it's been a pleasure to have you here. I've known Ted since since I was very young. And if we can go back to the photograph that we yes. went to before, uh, here's the significance. Uh, this is taken in Glendon, Minnesota. I, I took that picture. Ted 1953. Larson, 1953. You see a, a young boy there on the left. That's my cousin, Milton Ray, who was nine years old, holding a Ray gun at the time, a disintegrating gun. And you see that uh, dis disappearing apparition on the right. That was me at uh, seven years old. Even part of that has faded over the years, but uh, the, the deal was Ted, who was uh, 13 at the time, told me, okay, Stevie, back out as fast as you can when I give you the signal. So with his brownie hawkeye, he snapped it, and you get the uh, double exposure. Yep. And so there the we go. The beginning of a film career. Yes, yeah. like you said. Special say, effects. Special effects. Well, throughout the years, I remember the uh, running special effects over at the Moorhead State Theater Department, whether it was Odad, Poor Dad, later on with Rhinoceros. Uh, a man of uh, it's many, been a, many skills. It's many always been skills. a fascination of mine, and I suspect uh, maybe that's why I have this love for movies. They are the most special effect of all, I think. Uh, we, we might. There was a young man with a question during that first segment wondering whether the era of the classics is over. He referred to the Ten Commandments, Ben-Hur. Uh, is that something of the past with Cecil I'm not Dino? sure the Ten Commandments is a classic, unless it's maybe the, uh, the silent version of the film. But a lot of this is an attitude or opinion. Well, I would say absolutely not. If, if what you mean by classics are great memorable movies that will touch the hearts of people for decades to come. Certainly not, you know. Uh, in recent times, um, E.T., uh, The Little Mermaid stands a very good chance of becoming okay. another Disney classic, as I think any kid who saw it will attest to. So. Speaking of classics, we want to get, you know, be patient there if you're holding on the line, but Ted has honored us with a few very old clips, and we're going to get to them right now. Uh, as they come up here, yeah. Ted, you tell us what's going on. Uh, we're looking at a film, I think, made about 1907 called The Red Spectre. What's interesting about it is that it was hand-colored. It's a French film made by Ferdinand Zecca, and all the color that you see was put on the film one frame at a time, uh, and that's 24 frames per second of film footage. The story concerns uh, two magicians, a male and a female, who are competing with their magical illusions. And uh, that's basically the plot of the picture. Using camera tricks and special color effects, you end up with a, a truly astounding film. How many uh, uh, craftsmen, artists, do you suppose it entailed to... Well, I would say anywhere from 35 to 100 people. And remember, every, every print of the film had to be done separately. Right, so. That's amazing. 1907, approximately. That's a long time ago. Our uh, second clip uh, coming up, The Automatic Moving Company. This is a favorite of mine. This was made in France in 1910, and you can see that the French are, are, are rather inventive. Uh, this film is all about uh, a, a, co a company that moves your furniture automatically, hence the title, and it was shot one frame at a time, moving each dish and each piece of, of furniture, each element of scenery, uh, very, very slightly, and then shooting a shot or shooting a frame and going back and doing that over and over again. And it, it created the, the length of the film is about 10 minutes. It creates a, a very, very entertaining short piece of film footage. Notice that the uh, pieces of furniture here take on uh, a personality. 
<laughs> uh, here you have a parent box trying to find a child box and then uh, uh, taking him down the stairs. Oops, and there's make way a, for the piano. <laughs> there, there's a piano with, uh, with lots of uh, enthusiasm. Okay, well now we're going to get to something that probably uh, lots of folks will recognize in terms of the uh, character within this clip. Uh, it's a Buster Keaton oh. clip. Uh, Buster Keaton made this feature film, Steamboat Bill Jr., in 1928. Uh, Keaton, to me, was a, such an astounding craftsperson, uh, interested in, in doing any kind of effect that he could to gain his comedy. We're about to see what might be his most famous and, and most dangerous stunt. Uh, it's not the fellow jumping through the window, but that sets us up for what Buster Keaton, who is under the bed, uh, will do next. Uh, in shooting this, he only did it once. I think it may be the kind of thing you can only do once. <laughs> He's about to drop a house on himself. <laughs> he figured it out just by deciding where the house would fall uh, and created, I think, one of the supreme gags <laughs> <laughs> of all time. Uh, fabulous. The, the plot of this particular part of the film has Buster uh, caught up in a hurricane. And he used that to create an almost endless succession of gags. You know, the idea, I think, of this kind of thing is that, uh, be my attitude, that people who limit themselves uh, merely to contemporary <laughs> films uh, find that they're, they're, they're really cutting back on, on what all of cinema has to offer. That's fabulous. Um, and Buster always did, I mean, you can't see him the where he has always done all of his stunts. I think in one film where he had to, um, Jack nice of himself from the ground on a catapult into a window. He had he got a, a stunt person to work, but the 99 percent of everything he did was uh, uh, material that he did himself. Okay. Created and performed. Uh, well, now we got uh, just a couple of little clips. This is something oh. you want. Maybe want to tell us. Oh, here we go already. Yeah. What we're looking at is some recently discovered footage. Recently discovered footage. Um, of, of Moorhead in 1914. This film was shot from for the Northwest Farm Association meeting in June of 1914, and we're seeing cars here coming in from Crookston. This is what Moorhead looked like. As far as we know, this is the oldest surviving footage uh, from Moorhead. It's easy it's to an believe. Old, from an old movie theater, the Lyceum Theater. Yeah. Okay, just a tantalizing little clip, but uh, altogether, that's where. Well, uh, the, the, the total length of the film we discovered, uh, uh, we, th there was an article about finding film footage in Fargo-Moorhead, and uh, uh, my partner in this kind of uh, Rusty thing, Harold Castleton? Yep, Harold Castleton from Concordia College, a past student of mine and film teacher there, and I got a call from Wright Awning Company. They had some film in the back room, so they invited us over. We arrived on the noon hour, and said, we got this film. We thought it might be interesting. We don't know what it is. So we began to, uh, to view it, and it turned out to be... Uh, 10 minutes, 10 to 12 minutes of film footage of Moorhead as it was in 1914. So we're in the process of restoring that. Uh, it also has unique shots of Concordia uh, and uh, Moorhead State when it was Moorhead Normal School and dozens of other interesting highlights of farms okay. in the locale. Kitson El Fell for days and we saw the Crookston Band. Well, we're going to go to a break and uh, we're going <laughs> oh. to go to an Eagle Brand snack you. break. Your favorite, some it's, white cheddar popcorn. My, my favorite. Yes, oh, it's 